just hit me with your hair. Like, everyone needs to learn. <laughs> Get freaking whipped. <laughs> I'm working on my confidence right now. Are you? Yes. I, apparently, I'm not very confident in school. I wouldn't... That is the least um, characteristic thing I would think of you. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, welcome. My name is Paige Leal. I'm autistic and we talk about autism and stuff. This video is sponsored and made possible by Audible. So take it away, Paige. Thanks, Paige. And thank you to our sponsor for this video, Audible. I love reading and learning, but sometimes I don't have the time to sit there and like read an actual physical book. And a lot of times I don't have the focus to either. That's why I love Audible. They have a huge selection of audiobooks you can listen to while you're going about your day. I'm listening to Surrounded by Idiots by Thomas Erickson right now. And I actually love listening to any audiobooks that are kind of like about humans, human behavior, emotions, psychology, things like that. Audible also offers a huge range of podcasts, fitness programs, meditation, and sleep guides to help you get better sleep, which you know I'm using. Every month, Audible members get one free audiobook and full access to the entire Plus catalog. New Audible members get a free trial of 30 days. So go in there, get a free trial, and listen to all of the audiobooks. Thank you, Audible, so, so much for making this video possible with your sponsorship. Make sure to visit audible.com slash or text pagelayal to 500-500 to start your Audible membership today. You can check out my description for more. That's all for today. Thank you so much, Audible, and back to the video. Thanks, Paige. Hey, if you are not following me, you can go check me out on TikTok at Paige Leal. And while you're at it, you can follow my Instagram with the same name. And also, you might as well follow my YouTube channel and ring the bell to get notified when I make new videos. I am here. Obviously, this is not me. This is somebody else in my room. This is a whole other human being. Can you describe who you are, um, your relationship to me? How long have we known each other? I am Paige's best friend. We have known each other since we were infants, That's actually. True. Have we been friends all this time? No, we didn't get no. close until high school, probably. My name's <laughs> Olivia, also. <laughs> My best friend, Olivia. Before we progress any further, I want everyone to know that I am from Canada. A lot of people are in the States that are watching this. We are more than safe to be together. We are in a zone currently where you can have 25 people in a room together. We're in each other's circle, and, and even if not, we are, this is more than legal, we're okay. We've been isolating for the whole time, so no yes. one please get mad at us. Liv has ADHD and I am autistic. A lot of you guys have asked me about the differences between autism and ADHD, and I thought that this would be a really good opportunity for Liv and I to ask each other some questions. Liv and I have compiled 15 questions that we are going to ask each other, and um, we will discuss and see some similarities and some differences. We're so similar. But we're so, we have those little things that we're are We're so similar, different. but we're so different. Let's commence the interviewing now, shall we? Do you find yourself eating the same food, like fixating on the same food over and over again until you get sick of it? And then all of a sudden you never eat that food again and it's a completely new food. Yes. However, I always come back to it. Always. Yes. Okay. So also like I have ADHD too. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem that I'm like, I feel like some things I'm like, it's gonna be mm -hmm. all of a sudden. I also have foods that I continuously eat all of the time. Yeah, see, I get sick of them still. I have some of those, <laughs> like I totally do. Like I, yeah. I can remember I had it with bagels, I had it with English muffins, but then I also like, I ate a bologna sandwich every day for 14 years straight. So I know that you were talking about that you do have some physical sensory uh, issues. Mm -hmm. So when you don't like a texture, do you know why or like what turns you off about certain textures? It's not the fact that I feel it and it feels like it hurts. It's just that it's uncomfortable to my body. Or if it's something that I'm eating and I don't like the texture of it, I feel like I'm gonna puke it up. Do you think that you have a lot of like texture food? Food textures would be a big one? Yes. Onions are just- Onions have layers. And they make you cry. Elgers have layers. Anything that makes you cry should not be in your life. Period. <laughs> do you find it difficult to eat during the day and then end up overeating at nighttime? No. Do you do that? I do that. You do that? I do not do that because I don't feel hunger. I could go full days without eating and not feel hungry. I was wondering how weed makes you feel. See, I find that weed doesn't make me feel much different. Like It'll make me feel like I can go and do things. 
and I can concentrate on it. For me, it doesn't negatively like affect me. No. Cool. Do you have any nervous tics? And if so, what are they? A nervous tic may not be the right word. I have a lot of stems. When I was an actor, I definitely yeah. had nervous tics. Mm -hmm. like, I always moved my hand like did, and did this. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes when I'm making TikTok videos, I can see myself doing this. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a nervous tic. So, so when I get like nervous, I'll like I'll press my nails or I like will bite my nails. Yeah. Does it help you at all to do those things? I don't even notice when I'm doing it. Okay. And my sister will always be like, stop moving your leg. But if I made you stop, does that feel bad on your body? I would right? probably just start bouncing my other leg. Would you be okay to stop yes. doing it? Yes, I could do it. You could stop. I could stop. I know for myself, if I'm stimming and someone makes me stop, like it builds. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, and then I get Yeah, angry. like I can stop, but then I switch and I go to a different thing. A different thing. Like if I don't stim, then it gets worse at that. Yeah. If yeah. someone stops my stimming, it's gonna keep going yeah. harder because yeah. I'm like, holy fuck, I need to get it out. I need to get it out now. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think, when it comes to sensory issues, do you think that you seek like, are you a sensory seeker or are you sensory avoidant? I'm always constantly doing something with my hands. I'm always touching, like, my coat. I'm always touching my hair. So you're talking a lot about... <laughs> I don't know. No, it's okay. You're talking a lot about textures. Do you think that... Do you have any other senses, like, when it comes to taste, when it comes to sound, light? Light? I'm very sensitive to light. Do you ever find that one simple little thing can turn your day completely around? Like you That's could so be having funny. the best day in the world and then you come home and for example, like I came home one time and my sister and my mom ate my chips that I was saving. Mm -hmm. My whole day just flipped. Like I had the best day. I was so excited for those chips, was looking forward to it and they were gone. Everyone watch this video real quick. So Liv and I are the same person, that is the truth. Before Liv came over today, I had a panic attack and breathes really heavily right there. Now that I, I think that now that I'm in front of the camera, I'm acting a lot more, I'm trying to be okay. I, I, I get into something and it's really hard to get out. There's like things I have to do. Like I'm like, I can't be upset today. I'm gonna film a YouTube video with my best friend. I can't be upset. It's always that one little thing in the back of your mind where it's like, Okay, I know I'm happy right now, but that's still bothering me and I know I need to get this finished. No, I actually am not like that. No. I, look, I think that you, that's an ADHD thing where you're mm -hmm. like, I have multiple things I'm thinking of at the same time and this mm -hmm. is taking up all my energy and my thoughts. I have one thing and it's always the worst thing yeah. that's on me all the time. I can't mm -hmm. do anything else. I can't even be happy and then have something else in the back of my mind. I can't be happy. Well, I can like, like right now, like I'm like, this is fine, everything's good. Um, but like, you, I can tell you're not like yourself though. Even like, I can't go to a, a party, you know? Like if I'm not happy, I'm not happy and I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not. You're not going. Yeah. yeah. If yeah. you're like, come on, I'm like, no. Yeah. And I'll have like a bad day and I'll be like, okay, I'll put it behind me and I'll yeah. still go. And then you'll still go. Yeah. So yeah. I have another question yes. for you. What is harder, starting a task or finishing a task? Finishing a task. 100%. I knew you'd say that. Because I will start 50 different tasks at the same time. Yes. And then casually finish them as I'm starting more tasks. So I'll, for example, I will sit there and be like, okay, I'm gonna start doing my dishes. But then all of a sudden I recognize there's a cup in my room. So I go to my room and I grab the cup, but then I'm like, wait, now my laundry needs to be done. And I notice it. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there while my dishes are still in the sink in the soapy water, grabbing this cup, I'm holding this cup, but I will grab my laundry and put the cup in my laundry, bring the laundry over to the laundry room, throw it in a lot of laundry, and then the cup is still there. But then I'll notice I have to empty the garbage. So then I go and I empty the garbage. If I had a cup that had to go to the dishwasher, I would get the cup, and as I see that there's laundry and everything else to do, I'd go, nope, I don't prioritize the right things. Mm -hmm. And then I, that's also my thing, starting is the hardest part. I plan way before I start anything. Like I would know, I would yeah. I would go around and make a list of everything in the house I have to do. See, I just plan on the spot. And then I right plan there. out, and I'm not like that. Yeah. Like I would literally plan out every single thing that I have to do in what order and how to do it to optimize my time best. Mm -hmm. Are you optimizing <laughs> your time by planning for three hours when it takes you 10 minutes, Paige? Like that's my problem. Like I literally have, I was sitting in my room for two weeks planning to do one thing. How do you feel when someone corrects you? 
This is my thing. I'm uh, egocentric, so mm -hmm. I do not uh, believe or understand. I do not accept that other people are different than me. Yeah. I always think that I'm right all the time, and I know this, and mm -hmm. I know <laughs> like I'm like everyone else is wrong, mm -hmm. and I have a st very strict morality. Yeah. Of, this is right. This is wrong. And life is not black and white like that. So how do I react to criticism? Depends. <laughs> I'm accepting the criticism if like a black person is telling me how to be a better ally or like if someone who's trans is like, this is how I feel, whatever. I'm, yeah. it, it, like you, you need to change because you are not part of this group or whatever. I'm like, okay, I understand that because I, I understand that I cannot make those decisions for you. Mm -hmm. if anyone tries to question my judgment, I think, of like my reality in my life, I get very, very, very. Or facts that you know, oh, like facts. medically that are like, yes, this, this is the truth. Yes. That's yeah. It. That's it. I'm like, these are facts. And if you can't go against them and people mm -hmm. are like, no. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, you cannot go against a fact. It's a fact. When you're correcting me, I'm like, genuinely, thank you. Like I forgot. And like, that's my thing. I have an eidetic memory. So yeah. I do so not I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> like, I would not have remembered to put your hairbrush away. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. At first mm -hmm. I thought like everyone knows the same things I do. Mm -hmm. Everyone has an eidetic memory. Everyone knows, everyone knows all these things, but I know that that's not true. So mm -hmm. now like, what, like I'm like, let put my hairbrush away. Cause I knew you forgot. We're talking and you're like, oh, I'll repot your plant right now. And I'm like, no, we have things to do. <laughs> and I trust you enough. Like I know enough that if I were to say something or, or say, let's do this. Mm -hmm. I know that if you really didn't want to or thought I was being rude, you'd call me out. Yeah. So this is a good question for me. This is a, a big uh, autism versus ADHD, mm -hmm. big thing. Okay. So do you have any issues socially? Understanding social cues, social rules, body language, eye contact? No, actually. So I'm actually a child and youth care practitioner. I have learned how to tell such little cues and I've always been like that even with my friends I can yeah. tell when they're getting upset I and you also like you've always had lots of friends yeah I've seen it like, I always like I just like to communicate I just like to be social <laughs> that's something obviously that is not the same thing is change difficult for you yeah. for me it depends like what is changing change is always difficult for me all yeah. the time the places place such as like work or school those, those things, things I don't like to change okay. but anything else like furniture um nope. cleaning like moving things around no. like talking to new people no. like, i just feel like i'm always thinking of okay well that didn't work so let's do this scenario let's try and figure it out you know oh it's so fucking annoying something that bugs me about you and it's so funny because you don't mean to but you're just so social and it's not your it's not a fault it's not a bad thing we'll have a plan or something and you'll call me and you'll be like yeah, so I'm gonna be half an hour late. I'm bringing two people. We're going to a new location and we're taking your car. <laughs> and I'm like, no! And then I call you back later and I'm like, it'll work. Now I've gotten over it. Now we're okay. And you're like, okay, good. I didn't tell them not to. Like, I knew that you would get over it. It's like I almost purposely put you in the mo those moments to help you grow past To help them. you grow. Well, I will say, I will say that you have done that lots because I share my clothes with you now. And she's like, okay, I have these shirts, like, picked out for you, like, you can wear them. And, yeah, like, you can wear these shirts. Do you experience abnormal and intense rituals, intrusive thoughts? Anything that you have to do, like, in a pattern all the time? I'll give you an example. So I, part of autism is literally a subcategory mm -hmm. is, is basically OCD. Mm -hmm. Having rituals, having unrealistic uh, expectations and patterns and intrusive thoughts. Yeah, no, I just, like, Whatever goes, goes. Thankfully, I've done a lot of therapy mm -hmm. now that I don't let OCD control my life. I need to mm -hmm. touch everything with two hands yeah. and like evenly on both sides. Mm -hmm. Or like if I see a red car today, my day's gonna be bad. You find it difficult to multitask. Do you prefer to focus on one thing at a time? Which I guess we've kind of- I guess we've had it too. My next question for you, what was the hardest subject in school and why? Math. I hate math. Why? why I was just, so bad at math. I can't. My favorite I, subject. I literally just cannot do it. I don't remember numbers. I don't remember mm. the formulas. So what's your, what was the best? I could pull an essay out of my ass in two seconds. Mm -hmm. Like my best mm -hmm. is math, my least is English. Yeah. That's so funny. Which, yeah. Do you find yourself procrastinating a lot? Like yes. you leave things until the last minute. That is so funny. Yes. I mm -hmm. have such a hard time starting a task. That's the thing. It's, it's, um, mm -hmm. it's called, um, uh, oh, executive dysfunction. I definitely do procrastinate because I think that I spend more of the time planning on how to do the task perfectly than just doing it. That's hilarious to me because I will have my mindset on doing something. I need to complete it. Even if I don't have all the materials, I will mm. find the materials. A question, what is an ADHD misconception that is not true? Does it find me like if you were to act out of place 
towards someone else and I see you physically going out of their way and I can tell that they're uncomfortable by what you what you are making them do. During speeches, making that child with ADHD stand completely still. Oh. I would lose those marks because I can't stand still. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, that's not my fault. Why am I being penalized for that? I think it's the idea of professionalism and professionalism mm -hmm. makes me mad because it's a capitalistic construct anyway. Mm -hmm. Like why do we need to be professional to make you better? But I'm a set, like grade seven. Yeah. And that's the other thing too. Right? It's like, like change what you think professionalism looks like. Mm -hmm. Figure it out. How does cleaning up look to you? I know you, you're very like, this is the spot where it goes. Yeah. Do not move it. I'm like a little squirrel. I will shove everything underneath my bed. <laughs> when I was a kid, yeah, everything, my room is very messy. It always has been. Cause mm -hmm. I too have very poor object permanence. So if I don't have everything out, I forget that it exists. Mm -hmm. And then I don't use it. Like, mom would go in and clean my room because it looked messy, but then I don't know where anything is. Everything's changed. I will take everything back and mm -hmm. put it where it was. Even if that makes a mess. <laughs> I have an eidetic memory too. So if everything's out, I can see it in my brain like mm -hmm. where it is so once you move that around my brain picture and real life picture doesn't match up and that's Your not brain good. Is. is it difficult for you to stand up for others when the circumstance does not directly affect you no that's mm -hmm. so funny i have a very strict right and wrong yeah. i used to get in fights at school because someone was yelling at somebody or whatever if someone's like you're ugly and yeah. i'm like oh you fucking you're gonna call them ugly i'm, I'm gonna, very much the same way, i'm gonna yeah. yell scream at you oh yeah i might not even care about them i care about being right yeah and i'm like you're wrong i care about everyone else being wrong like i'm yeah. like that's wrong mm -hmm. fix it and mm -hmm. that's my thing what's the difference between how you communicate with me and how you communicate with your other not autistic friends I treat you very much like how i like me and you act the exact same as how i act with my sister so like I'm just we can be as weird as we want and I don't have to feel the judgment almost but when I'm around other people it's almost as if oh they're probably judging me because I just did that. I have poor interoception so I don't know how emotions I've, I've discovered this all emotions for me feel the exact same in my body. Mm -hmm. I want to know what emotions feel like to you. Okay so for me being stressed and embarrassed is almost as like I feel it in my body like not in my chest like in my arms like I feel like I have like a twitching sensation or I feel like a like I get like a cold like shiver down my body and like I don't know like I just feel like when you're scared do you also feel that yes when I'm scared I also feel, I feel that. like that I feel like a shiver down the spine yeah is a scared thing like, when I'm happy I feel it like I don't know like my brain how does being a sensory like how does having sensory issues affect you in your daily life? Clothing, I always have to be mm -hmm. like a specific, no, there's no tags on any of my things. Um, and there, it's very specific. Like I do not, I like to wear things that I can mm -hmm. move in, um, that are soft, that kind of thing. No leather, no jeans, no velvet, mm -hmm. no cotton, like pure cotton. No. Fuck those textures. Mm -hmm. With sound, um, like I having I have all the sounds playing at all mm -hmm. of the times. Um, with taste, I am like extreme textures and tastes, um, flavors, not tastes. No. Light, I do have blue light goggles that I'm wearing all the time on social media mm -hmm. or um, sunglasses when I'm outside because, you know, sun. When it comes to things like temperature, I don't feel it. I rely on other people to help me. When it comes to food, eating, I don't feel that either. Mm -hmm. um, like I will not go to the bathroom. I will not eat. I will not drink unless someone tells me to or unless I have it planned to do it because I don't feel those things. When I'm out in public, I always have to make sure that I have an exit plan, like how to get home at what time, mm -hmm. whatever. Like I always have, you know, like ready for a taxi mm -hmm. to come get me and send me home. Or I have headphones all the time so I can pop those in if everything's loud. Yeah. I have fidget toys all the time. I have smells all the time that make me feel good. So if anything, if I go into any kind of sensory overload, hopefully I can prevent it getting worse. What are some accommodations that you have or need in school? I definitely need that extra time on tests it takes me a long time to actually focus on what i am reading It'd help you if you wrote a test alone in a room and that's the thing i have tried that before and that almost makes me feel more anxious because mm -hmm. then i feel centered out do you have any like issues yeah. coming to class or paying attention in class like would you would you benefit from having someone take notes for you I mm, see again like that's my only way I ever learn it though yeah, right yes. do you like to focus your attention to helping others when you don't feel like facing your own problems I think I already know the answer to this I can probably answer it for you I want to say that no because your brain gets so overloaded you can't focus on helping other people because you need to focus on helping yourself first I know that's how I feel but I'm very much I will shove everything to the back yes 
and I'll be like, you're first, you're my priority. I want to say that I am like that, but I'm not. But like, it's... again, that's not your fault. Well, I that's know, the difference between sucks. our brains, right? That's part of the reason why I feel like I'm such a bad friend because I have to focus on myself so much of the time. Okay. What is your ideal job scenario? Mm, so with people who I communicate with, it's always actively moving, um, always on the go. Like, yeah, like I always just, it's like spontaneous. If it's repetitive over and over, like I can't do it. And you're just the complete I'm opposite. The opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be comfortable having a, uh, a boss and having coworkers? Having people above you, below you, middle? Yeah, like yeah. I feel totally comfortable with like someone, I need someone to be able to like tell me what to do. My ideal job scenario is doing the same thing over and over again with no boss, nobody else, just me. Do you find it difficult to hold relationships? Yes, Yeah. I do. Well, and I think that because I'm very, I'm a difficult person, like I, I'm very- And I, I feel like it's a lot of the time people don't understand you. Yes, and, I'm not, and it's not their fault, but it's also not mine. A lot of people have left me in my life and I didn't know why. There are a lot of communication issues with me. And I think communication is one of the biggest parts of our relationship. 90% of communication is non-vocal, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I don't see 90% of that communication. Yeah. I know that I have boundaries that I need. Like mm -hmm. I have struggled with suicidality before and there are certain things that I need to do to make sure that I keep myself safe. Mm -hmm. I really need people to respect that. And some people are not emotionally mature enough to understand that I'm not made to please everybody yeah. i try not to like use that to my advantage or whatever but uh, like you know what i'm saying but you are very forgiving and i think that that helps because <laughs> <got> some, <laughs> sometimes i'm a jerk and i don't mean to be at all i love you to death but the thing is is even if like i will turn around i'll be like that kind of upset me and yeah. we talk about it and, and, we, we totally... and then you're like you're right you're but. right do you have any like intense interests what are they like so I went through that phase where I was obsessed with animals and then I was obsessed with my fish tank and then I was obsessed with plants and I don't know, I'll just like, Does it like work really hard head? on them and yeah. like that's the only thing I think about and I want to spend a bunch of money on it and I that's the only thing I think about in life and then I eventually get bored of it and I switch. So do you have like a, do you have a safe spot? In my house. In, yeah, your house? Life? Is on it like my, your last room? On my bed. Yeah? On my bed and I... It's always been my bed, mm -hmm. um, sitting and having everything out, like notebooks, iPad, laptop, mm -hmm. toys, food, right here. And once I have a house mm -hmm. that has multiple places, I'm sure that my safe spot will always be inside of a building that is my own. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like- It'll be like your own little area. Yeah, but I feel like once I have a house that has multiple rooms, that answer could change. What is the hardest thing about having ADHD? Probably just the fact that I always feel annoying i interrupt people that is one of the biggest things that that's funny me. that you're big the hardest thing about having ADHD yeah. is having people annoyed with you sometimes it can be really hard i don't know yeah no <laughs> yeah. i'm sorry i'm staring i'm sorry i just stared at you for so long are yeah. yourself like fixating on certain tasks for long periods of time yes that's so funny that's yeah so i um fixating maybe not actually um sometimes like i bought a cricket and then thousands of dollars worth of cricket things and then didn't touch it after and i think that that was an adhd thing then there are interests that i have that are prolonged like anatomy has been mm -hmm. one since i was a kid and mm -hmm. i could learn everything still to this day i find it so like i will continue to learn mm -hmm. like i know so much about it same with so anatomy's always been one Paris, mm -hmm. like the Eiffel Tower. I know that, like, and I think that I have, like, interests that are interests. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is the thing that I really like. And mm -hmm. this is the thing that I like to learn. When it comes to, like, anatomy, like, I mm -hmm. need to know everything. 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 Yeah. Like, every, like, and then, and the, the problem with the world is you go smaller and smaller and smaller. Like, mm -hmm. I want to know, like, oh, here's a human body. Mm -hmm. Then you go inside. This is what a muscle is. You go inside the muscle. This is what, like, literally is going on. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, I want to know chemically what's going on. Like, I want to know yeah, every everything. single thing. And yeah. I, it, like, I could never stop mm -hmm. learning about it. Mm -hmm. I could talk about it for hours. I could learn any, anything. That's awesome. I could relearn the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Like, I See, I never go to that extreme. Yeah. This world is just so hard that I just want to know all of the things. And that's so awful. And that's why I'm so depressed. I mean, I love you. Thank you. Do you have any other questions for me? No. Thank you so much, Liv, for being here. Thank you guys so much. Make sure that you are subscribed and followed. And if you have any more questions, any other videos, if you want to see more of Liv, um, I'm sure that she would be down to, like, <laughs> do this again. So if anyone wants to follow this me, gal, 
where can they find you? On Instagram, they can follow me at Olivia Chidley underscore underscore. It will also, everything will be <laughs> linked down below. So if you go into the description, you can click directly and it'll lead you to her page. Give her a follow. We'll see you later. Thank you, Liv. You're the best. And we love you so much. If you guys have any questions, let us know. Love you. Bye. Bye.